Hello and welcome back everyone to Lynch Paint, or should I say Lynch DMs. That's right, I'm going to be starting a new series looking into Dungeons and Dragons uh, from a Dungeon Master's point of view and sharing some of my knowledge and some of my experiences that I've had over the past few years with being a Dungeon Master myself. I'm currently running three campaigns at the minute, two fantasy based and one is a Star Wars based. That one's quite new and it's... Um, yeah, it's different. It's very fun, but it's quite a bit different. So in this video, I'll be explaining some helpful tips and tricks and to tell you how I started my Dungeon Master journey to hopefully benefit anyone out there that's new to it that would love to get into Dungeon Masters, um, Dungeon Masters and Dungeons and Dragons, um, but want to become a Dungeon Master and don't know where to start. So let's begin with step one. So the first step, um, and these aren't in any particular order in terms of importance or relevance, uh, these are just how I started be to become a dungeon master. So the first step would be to find someone that you know, so a friend or a family member that is currently doing a Dungeon Dragons campaign and ask if you can be a part of that as a player. This will allow you to get a, a really good grasp of how Dungeons and Dragons works um, from a player's perspective and then from there you can um, listen and watch the Dungeon Master as he sort of narrates and sets up the scenes and the, all the various combats and the encounters. This is a great place to, to start. This is how I started as well and it helped me to better understand a Dungeon Master and sort of what they have to go through and everything that needs to sort of prep and plan and everything like that but it also allowed me to know what to expect as a player and then sort of figure out what I kind of might have wanted in my own setting in my own sort of world so I think if if you can be a player in a campaign that's available then do so if for whatever reason that there aren't any available campaigns um, that, that you can get to locally, then there are a plethora of online Dungeons and Dragons online sessions. For example, like Roll20 uh, that you can go into and you can join people from around the world. Uh, these have grown in popularity since the great shut-in of 2019 and they have been proved very, very useful during that period. Um, and the success of them has continued to this very day. So fear not if you are living on a tiny island or a little hamlet and there's no one nearby that does Dungeons and Dragons, then you can use one of those websites. I'll pop a couple of links in the description as well if you wanted to check them out. So moving on to step two. So step two, finding players. Now we have covered a little bit of that during the last step in terms of trying to find people to play with. So you can use those online sites, you can talk to your friends that are in a campaign that you might have already joined and say, hey, I'm thinking about setting up my own campaign, would you like to join mine as well? Most often than not, if you are um, in that sort of hobby space with friends that are also into the same things as you, more often than not, they're gonna say yes, and they're gonna come right on board and join your campaign. And it doesn't matter if at this point in time you don't really have an idea of what your campaign's gonna be, the setting, the world, the gods, anything like that. It doesn't matter. So long as you can try and find some form of interest into a potential campaign that you want to run, that is the next sort of stepping stone because then that will help to inspire you to then say, right, cool, I've got five people that want to join my campaign. This is fantastic. Now let's get the ball rolling because it would be a bit of a waste of time and a bit of a shame if you had gone and spent many hours or days even making this elaborate campaign and plot and maps and dragons and everything like that, all the cool stuff, and you ask around and no one's available to join. So put your feelers out, see if there's anyone that's interested, and then once you've done that, you can then start to plan a campaign. Now you're probably wondering how many people do I invite? Um, and what size group would I like to go for? Generally speaking, as a good average, if you aim between 
three and five players, ideally four, somewhere in the middle, about four players. If you have too few players, then there's not quite enough um, ideas being bounced around and there's, there's not enough of a social atmosphere. So as a rough guide, aim for about four players. Maybe ask um, a few more people because you never know. Some might say no and then eventually you will still end up with between three and five players for your campaign. Step three. So you've got people interested in a potential campaign that you want to run. You have been playing in a current campaign with your friends and, and, and your friend being a dungeon master as well. You got a good idea of how it's run from a player's point of view. The next step is to figure out how is it run from a dungeon master's point of view. And this is where you're going to need some books. Now, best bet is to start out with the Dungeon Master's Guide. Hopefully by this point you have the Player's Handbook as well. If you don't have one, um, then I have an affiliate link in the description for Wayland Games. You can buy a physical copy from them. If you don't want a physical copy, you can always find a PDF form or you can download D&D Beyond app and then download the books from there. But I think you have to pay for them. Um, Apart from the basic rules, that's free, so that's fine. So, Dungeon Master's Guide, Player's Handbook. The third book is the Monster Manual, and this will give your world life. It will populate it with the various horrors from different planes of existence. Uh, anything from, you know, the, the classic goblins and dragons, hence Dungeons and Dragons is in the name, you're gonna have some dragons. So, that is gonna lead us to the next stage. So the next step is creating your world. Now, inside the Dungeon Master Guide, there is quite a few sections where it will detail exactly how to do this, how to draw out your maps and your world, um, what kind of campaign setting you're going to go for, um, the various gods that you want in your world, the different planes of existence that you would like in your world, all that sort of stuff. Um, so as a start out point, what I would recommend is go with what inspires you. Now, for me, it's Tolkien, it's Middle-earth, it's the Lord of the Rings, it's a fantastic setting. It has all your classic fantasy tropes in there. It's also, as well, quite low magic, um, but you can always take inspiration from a franchise such as Lord of the Rings in terms of the, the map, um, the different factions that they use, but you can just kind of adapt it to your own. So you can have all these various factions and a map that it looks similar to Middle-earth um, and the technology level of Middle-earth as well, but you can introduce um, hot, air um, hot airships, air balloons. You can introduce a high level of magic. You can introduce different realms of existence like a, like a Shadow Realm or like the, the Feywild that's in Dungeons and Dragons. You can introduce um, various chaotic space monsters that would like to kind of drift by the planet and then crash land into your world, causing chaos and destruction. You can do all sorts, but go with what interests you because what interests you will also be similar to what will interest your friends because of course you bond over friendship with similar interests and likes. And as a starting point, go with something that's um, that, that inspires you and keep it fairly simple. You can always add in stuff at a later date as well. It's quite uh, an organic um, kind of natural process with being a dungeon master. Um, you'll learn things along the way and then you can sort of seamlessly add it into your campaign and write it in as if it had been there all along. So the next step is going to be uh, picking a theme and a setting. So we've already briefly touched that on the previous step. So, more often than not, nine times out of ten, the setting and the theme of most Dungeons and Dragons campaign is fantasy based. And this is people running around in sort of knights uh, on horseback with swords and shields, crossbows, that sort of thing. Um, most of the rules are centered around these sorts of equipment and weapons as well. But there's nothing stopping you from adding in your own sort of twists to it. You could have it as a caveman era setting. So everyone has stone weapons or clubs and wooden t 
tools and everything's very, very basic and primitive. You could have it set in a steampunk kind of environment um, where you have steam powered sort of ships and sort of sea ships and also airships as well. Um, there are some equipment that's already made up within the Dungeon Master's sort of rule books and various other kind of additional books that they brought out whereby you can have space uh, ships and, and combat and you know you can explore the the different worlds out there. You can also set it in a completely different galaxy altogether. Um, so I mentioned previously I do run a Star Wars based D&D campaign. Um, this has been all the rules have been made by a different person so they had free pdfs that was managed to, to download it saved me a lot of time and effort because i was going to homebrew the entire thing but thankfully someone's already done a lot of hard work for me so in terms of your setting and your theme it's it's really just whatever you like um but i would start out with the fantasy base because that's what most tend to do and it's the most easy um information to access as well and it's what most people generally would expect. So the next step we're going to briefly discuss story and plot. So you'd look at a, a plot and then build a story around that. I'll give you an example, uh, Lord of the Rings is, is one of the greatest stories ever told but the plot was very simple. Frodo just had to get the ring to Mordor and destroy it. That was the plot. That was it. It was so simple. Take the ring from one place to another and chuck it into the lava and boom. But the story that then was enveloped around it was absolutely fantastic. So choose a simple plot. It could be that kind of thing. You have to deliver one item to from one location to another location on the other side of the world. But the stories that will come around that, that will then branch out from that, is limitless really so keep the plot simple and then from there it will make things a lot easier to then plan a story around it it would be absolutely fantastic if you just keep the plot nice and simple and then you can flesh it out with all kinds of adventures it could be fetch quests murder mysteries um go in dungeon crawls go in to help rescue someone help to deliver someone from uh, so sort of one kingdom to another and from there it can just explode with amazing ideas. So these are just some helpful tips and tricks of how I grew to become a dungeon master and this will be able to help anyone out there that is new to being a dungeon master that wants to try out to be a dungeon master so I, I help I hope I hope that this helps you to kickstart your first steps into an amazing adventure with your friends and or family um, whether that's in person or online if you have any other sort of suggestions or want to discuss further then please let's uh let's talk down in the comments below leave me a comment if you really like any of these steps then do push that like button that would be amazing and if you're new to the channel then a subscribe click would be absolutely amazing it would help me out so much so i really hope that you enjoyed this first video into uh, the world of dungeons and dragons uh, from a dungeon master point of view and yeah so happy adventuring out there stay safe stay beautiful and we'll see you next time